Hello and welcome to the U.S. Men's Lacrosse National Team Series, Home Soil. I'm Pete Medhurst. It's great to have you with us. This summer, Team USA will take the field in San Diego in hopes of capturing a gold medal in this year's 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championships. Team USA has been here before. They won the gold in 2018 at the World Championships in Israel and have been a dominant force for many years. In this episode, we will sit down with U.S. Men's National Team attackman Michael Sowers and hear stories about why he chose to play lacrosse, how he grew up in the sport, and ultimately how all roads in his life have led him to representing Team USA this summer on home soil. You have the national team, these players looking to impress. The coaching and execution by Team USA, and finally a little spark. This U.S. team is absolutely loaded. We have stars all over the field. The 2023 World Championships are the pinnacle of the lacrosse world, and this summer, all eyes will be on San Diego. Here's a look at what fans can expect out of the World Championships in 2023. This summer, the best lacrosse players from around the world will meet at the 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championships with one thing on their mind, winning gold. This year, the stakes are higher. More than 30 countries, more than 100 games, and it all takes place in San Diego, California. Some of the countries competing include the USA, Canada, Japan, England, Australia, Jamaica, Uganda, the Haudenosaunee, and many more. The World Lacrosse Championships is a unique opportunity for the world to come together to celebrate the medicine game. The host Snapdragon Stadium provides a great venue for high level global competition that fans will love. From June 21st to July 1st, Team USA will embark on a quest for greatness. 23 of the best players from the United States will look to come together as a team to attempt to claim gold for the 11th time, and they will look to do it on home soil. This year's World Championships are building up to be the best ever. Team USA will face some tough competition in their mission to keep the gold medal on home soil. When we come back, We'll hear from the pride of Upper Dublin, Pennsylvania, and star attackman, Michael Sowers. Michael Sowers has made his mark in the game of lacrosse. Three-time high school All-American, four-time college All-American, four-time All-Ivy League, Team USA U19 World Champion, and PLL Champion, to name a few. For Michael, the journey to success began on the turf at Spark Field, a rec field like many others neighboring the high school which still celebrates his name and a place Michael truly feels at home. Sowers, the number two pick in the draft. I sell with my head, my eyes, and my body. He's got to be kidding me! Sowers all by himself! Michael Sowers, member of the Water Dogs Lacrosse Club, uh, also a member of Team USA. Home soil to me just just means a place where you're comfortable. The main place for me is, is Spark Field. That's a place that I really grew up and really helped me develop my passion, not only for lacrosse, but sports in general. This field right here is pretty much where I grew up uh, and I think really developed my passion for the game. I can remember when those fields first opened when I was in second, third grade. And really it was 
pretty much every Saturday that I had available, I was up on those fields doing some sort of activity, whether it was football games, lacrosse games, shooting on my own, playing football with my friends. That spot right there, it's one, the center of the community. It's literally in the center of the town, but also a place where people kind of came together and, and played things together. It's definitely a place of comfortability for me. It's a smaller town and especially within the athletics community, um, everybody seems to know everybody. Uh, and if you don't, at least through a mutual connection. So uh, there's this sense of community and you're looking out for the younger generations and the younger generations watch you play. Uh, so, so it's a cool atmosphere. The community has really just meant so much to me at, at, through my childhood, through my, my high school experience. Um, I think that it's one of the reasons that I developed my passion for the sport and you know, for sports in general, not just because of the actual sport itself, but because of the people involved with it. I loved playing with my friends. I loved playing with the guys in this community that you, know, you still see around now. My favorite lacrosse player growing up was Mike Powell. We had VHS tapes of his Syracuse games and his MLL games, and I remember just watching them on repeat. And every time it, he played, it just looked like he was having so much fun. As a kid, you grow up watching, you know, day in the life of so-and-so athlete, um, and now to be in this position and uh, know that, you know, younger kids uh, across the country, but also in my hometown, will watch that video and hopefully that can inspire them to, to shoot for the same, same spot. Being a coach's son to me, one, I, I grew up with a stick in my hand. It was a lacrosse stick in the spring and a football in the fall. It instilled a passion for the game. It instilled my knowledge for both football and lacrosse, just being in coaches' rooms, listening to how they dissected things, how they looked at different defenses. You know, defense does this, we're gonna do why. Um, so I think that I really just developed my IQ being in those rooms. But also I think more than anything that my dad has taught me is just the concept of hard work. He did a great job of pushing me, but not beyond what I wanted to do on my own. My dad runs a summer lacrosse camp called Beer Best Lacrosse. And really it was just about spreading the game in this area. And I grew up going to the camp. I went every year, I remember the night before camps, not being able to sleep, I was so excited. And uh, Beer Best is great because it's really the sport at its purest form, which is just having fun and being creative and playing with your friends and hanging out with your friends. They definitely do a little bit of skill work, but the emphasis is on having fun, which for a young player is so important to be reminded why you started playing in the first place, which is to have fun, play with your friends, and now to be able to go back, to be able to give back, Squeeze that glove and shoot with our top hand finishing around. Give a little bit of instruction, but also share my story and my experiences with the camp and how, you know, the camp just always reminded me to have fun and why I started, which is I love to play. There's career point number 300 for Michael Sowers. I'm a homebody. I love being at home. Uh, I love having my family be able to come and visit me. I knew that my family being able to get to games was a huge priority, and so uh, Princeton happened to be the closest school. And not to mention, I mean, every time I went, I just felt comfortable with the guys. There's the cliche saying, as you're walking around, you know, like, go to a place where you could see yourself walking around. For some reason, when I stepped on campus there, I just like felt comfortable, I felt right. So it was really on top of the unbelievable academics. I felt comfortable, but most importantly, it was 35 minutes from my house. I mean, my grandparents were able to come up to every single game, watch me and my parents were able to come up for dinner. I was able to see them all the time. I was able to come home. So that was a huge part of it for me.
it was just like a tight-knit community. The Princeton athletics community felt similar to, uh, you know, the Upper Dublin athletics community in the sense that it's smaller, but uh, it feels like a very family-oriented atmosphere where, you know, everybody knows each other, everybody's looking out for each other. The alumni at Princeton are really, uh, are really next level. I mean, from the network that they provide uh, to just their passion for the program, program itself. As a player, you feel a different level uh, of responsibility to, to continue to uphold the program to that standard. Coach Mads is like the ultimate players coach. He is hard-nosed, he's tough, but at the same time, I think that his ability to relate to players on an individual level really allows him to, to bring the best out of, you know, almost everybody that goes through those doors. When we come back, you'll hear more from Michael on his journey from young Pennsylvania product to representing the USA. Sometimes, like I said, I have to remind myself that at 25, I still get to play the game at the highest level and, and continue to compete and continue to play the game that I love. You just heard from Michael Sowers about his upbringing in Upper Dublin, how important his community was to his success, and how this hometown boy's path has led him to representing Team USA. Michael Sowers, one of the best players in collegiate history, is back. Michael Sowers may be 5'9". He's not going to take anything from anybody. Michael, you happen to be the quickest player in the league. Sometimes you just, you know, have to put your head down, make a play one-on-one. -on -one. Team USA at the U19 level was really like me taking a huge step in my career because that was unlike anything that I had ever experienced. There's no way I'm going to make this team. I mean, I was one of the younger guys. I don't even know if I want to try out. Like, there's 108 guys going. Uh, Coach Banks and my dad at the time pushing me to, to go to those tryouts and, and give it, you know, everything I had. And I think uh, at that point, I really just committed everything I had to it. I remember working out at Spark twice a day with my trainer at the time, Josh Wilcox. People used to joke, joke ask me if I slept at the fields because I'd be there, I would close them down, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, the lights would go off. We'd be doing conditioning. We'd get up the next morning and we'd be shooting. That was the first time that I realized like, to be a great lacrosse player, it takes a lot more than just showing up on game days and doing it. So that experience really opened my eyes to, to what it took to be a great lacrosse player and succeed at the college level. My emotions when I made that team for the first time, I mean, obviously I was overjoyed. Uh, but at the same time, it had been such a long, grueling process, especially for me. I mean, after the first tryout, I had spent two weeks in the hospital with dehydration issues. I had mono, so I had a high fever. And the fourth tryout, I was just coming off of mono. Committed so much to that point, sacrificed a lot, and really just committed myself to it. Putting on the jersey for the first time, it's surreal. And I remember walking into the locker room, seeing your name plate, and that jersey and like it, you're kind of like taken back for a second. The under 19 World Games were out in British Columbia. That experience was my first time out of the country. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a homebody. You're just like wide eyed, you know, it's like, it, it's one of those moments where it hits you. It's like, the, this game has given me so many amazing opportunities that I'll always be grateful for. But at the same time, you know, like, you're reminded that like, you're on a mission, you know, it's a business trip. You're up there representing the country and you have a job to, to compete and win gold. Sometimes, like I said, I had to remind myself that at 25, I still get to play the game at the highest level and, and continue to compete and continue to play the game that I love. Being on home soil uh, really means, well, one, it's a different level of pride. I mean, you're playing in your home country. Um, but I also think there's a sense of like defense there. You're defending your own home turf. I think you look at it as a challenge. You know, we know the, the Canadian roster is absolutely loaded, but um, at the same time, you know, like we have a very talented roster ourselves. 
and I think that for us it's really just going to be about becoming the best team that we can be both on the field and off the field really developing that chemistry because I think that you know we absolutely have the talent to to win gold and uh, that will boil down to you know how we mold uh, and come together as a team for the USA team it, it's a unique challenge because everybody's kind of in their own separate parts of the country right now and doing their uh, respective thing and eventually we'll all come together and compete for it but you know right now I know some of the vets some of the leaders of the team have already started you know pulling guys together we have our group chat that's constantly buzzing guys checking in uh, you know Pinnell calls me like once a week that's a guy that I idolized growing up that I grew up watching the ability to play with Rob Pinnell is, is pretty special every one of his games at Cornell uh, I pretty much watched and uh, all of his stuff on YouTube from his question marks to him coming around finishing still stuff that I watch today and I try and emulate today so I think the ability to, to play with him uh, and learn from him both as a player but also as a pl as a person and the leader um, it is a is a pretty unreal experience the success in the 2023 world games is uh, becoming the best team possible. The cliche answer would be to, to win gold and that obviously is a success for Team USA and you know that's the mission but at the same time I think on the team level we just want to become the best team possible and create those relationships and create that chemistry and I think through that good things happen and success comes but I think it starts there. I'm most looking forward to, to just being able to, to wear the jersey, to wear the USA jersey and represent the country and play in front of uh, you know US people and play on our home soil play in front of my family who will be out there you know, I have like an unbelievable support group that has really traveled with me every step of my career for the young player aspiring to be on Team USA one the game has taken me to places that I could have never imagined that I would end up. Japan being one, British Columbia being another. San Diego, I've never been to the to the West Coast before PLL brought me there. The ability that the game has to take you to those places, it's really incredible. The reason it's such a great sport is because it's fun and it's a creator's game and it's a creative game by nature. And I think that uh, no matter what level you are at, you never lose that joy, that passion for the game. And I think that uh, for a younger player, you know, like it, it doesn't get much better than that. With that mindset, it's safe to say that Team USA has a great young leader who understands the sacrifice and commitment it takes to claim gold. When we return, we'll hear from one of the most pivotal figures in making these world championships a reality for Team USA. Michael Sowers is a player who understands the importance of community and the comfort of being home. Someone else who understands this better than most is USA Lacrosse CEO Mark Riccio. We had the opportunity to sit down with Mark and talk to him about the initiatives that USA Lacrosse is pushing in preparation for the World Championships and beyond. To have it on home soil is, uh, we're very grateful for that opportunity to showcase the games here in the States. I would strongly believe my um, affection for my hometown is no different than every one of these players on this roster. Every one of these players beams with pride when they talk about home. For me, home sits at the center of how lacrosse was very good to me. Our great strength is our lacrosse community. It is welcoming, it is dynamic, it is uh, something really special, you know, the, the spiritual and native roots of this game, the creator's game gifted to us by the Native Americans, is part of that origin story and that makes this community so special. The national teams, high performance team has done a great job so far. We certainly have high expectations and high hopes for a gold medal, but the reality is the outcome is uncertain. Certainly, I would assume we're going to be one of the favorite nations as, as defending world champion. But Canada is awesome. Haudenosaunee, awesome. Japan is going to be the next great international competitive nation in lacrosse. So you just never know. 
hope we give them a run for their money, I should say. I'm certainly excited to, to see them, and I'm, I'm excited to see um, who surprises us. There's always gonna be a nation that kind of steps forward and like, whoa, whoa, didn't see that coming, they're pretty good. Uh, and that's gonna be exciting to watch. One, two, three, USA! Success for Team USA, first and foremost, is going out, competing, playing hard, playing the right way, representing your country and your teammates to the best of your ability. Beyond that, ultimately, success is a gold medal, is a world championship. Um, there isn't a player or coach or even person in this building uh, who would answer differently. If you go out and you lose, but you lose with your head held high and you left everything on the field as a player and as a person, it, it's all we can ask for. Michael is just one of 23 players that will get the honor to go to battle for Team USA this summer. We'd like to thank Michael along with our gracious sponsors for allowing us the opportunity to tell his story. For more information on how you can support USA Lacrosse and begin your own journey on the field, head over to usalacrosse.com. On behalf of USA Lacrosse and NLSE, I'm your host, Pete Medhurst. Join us here next time for another origin story on the next episode of Home Soil.